Hello and welcome to tutorial 165. In this tutorial I've got a simple strategy applied to a chart and I've also got a form with a button on it and when I click the button the strategy is able to make trades provided of course its internal conditions are fulfilled and I can also pause that. So let me just show you what I mean. If I click the button to start the trades and you'll see that that's done a couple of things. Trades can now occur and the button has changed the text. It's gone green. That The green indicates that we're in a position where we can make trades. And if I click the pause strategy trades, you'll see now if we leave it a few seconds that the, uh, the trades are no longer occurring. And then if we were in a few seconds to click it again, start strategy trades, then you'd see that the, uh, the trades start to occur again. Let me just show you the actual strategy conditions in the program. And it's basically just using a little counter and we're saying, um, just ignore the trade is true at the moment. If it's a real time chart and the counter is equal to zero, then buy next bar, bar at market. If it's equal to three, then sell short next bar at market. And then when the counter gets to three, we reset it to minus one. So next time it goes round again, the counter, we add one to the counter, it's equal to zero. So we got next bar at market, etc. And we're also printing the counter. So just go back to the chart. You'll see that no trades have occurred. Get the form, say start strategy trades. And then you'll see the strategy trades recommence. And this has got nothing to do with the uh, status of the strategy because that status had remained for this particular program the same as status is on. So what I've done is I've applied another program to the chart, which I've called tutorial 165 devel and uh, so far that has just got the strategy in it but what we're going to do i'm just going to show you how you can create the form from scratch so here is the, uh, the program we're going to be working on and you'll see there's very little else there at the moment so i'm going to what i'm going to do is right click on the program and i'm going to say add form so I'm just going to resize this a little bit and I'm going to add a button to that. So we're going to go to toolbox and we're going to look for the button. You can double click that and you'll see we've got a button here. Just uh, resize that a little bit and we're going to say uh, something like start trades. So let's just resize the form a little bit more and click on the button, go to properties and we can change the text for that button to something like start trades. Having done that, what we can also do is go to properties and we're interested in the event when the button is clicked. Well, that's actually the form. You need to have the button selected. When the button is clicked, again, just go to the events and then just double click in this area here. And that will create the button click method. Now, what I can do is go into the designer generated code and copy the code here into our program. So it's going to create a little bit of space here and paste. Now I want the the bulk of this you can't use initialize or you shouldn't use initialize component in a normal strategy so what i'm going to do is just change this into a once statement so it happens when the program is first run and it's going to get rid of some of the common tree 
some of it I've got I've changed in the uh, final program but so we can just leave that there at the moment and uh, because this that is now a one statement we need to move this button click event above the one statement Now, if I were to try and verify the program now, we're going to get an error. And the reason for that is that we have still got the form in the designer generated code. So we're effectively saying that there are two variables with the same name. If we go to view toolbars and then resource view, and we can see our program here, we can also see the form. What I'm going to do is select that, then right click and say delete form. So you can see the designer generated code has cleared. We can now go back to our program and verify that. Now if we were to apply this to the chart right now we would not see the form. So another thing that we need to do is we need to show the form and we can do that by putting in the one statement after we've set up the form as is, we can go form one, which is what it's called. Let's check that. Form one and show. Let's just check that that verifies. So let's go and look at the chart and I'm just going to put the status of this strategy to be on. So as we're developing it, we'll see if we're creating any bugs. So we've got the, uh, the start of the program there and we're going to go back to the program and just so that the, this, uh, this new development program is the same as the program I've already developed. I'm just going to change the text to start strategy trades like so. Now then, uh, when we click the button, we want various things to happen. One, that the color changes and uh, two, that we set a variable that we need in order to trade. So let me just show you how I did that. First of all, we're going to create a, a Boolean and it's going to be intrabar persist. So I'm going to go here into the variables and I'm going to say intra bar persist and it's bool. I'm going to call it trade like so. And then we're going to create some code here in the button click. I'm going to say if trade equals false, then begin. And we can actually change the button text. And if you want to know the syntax for that, if we go down into the code that we just copied, you'll see that the syntax is here, button1.text. So we can actually copy that just to save some typing and go back to the click event. And the first thing we want to do is change that to pause strategy trades. And then we're going to change trade to be equal to true. And then the other thing we want to do is change the back color of the button to green. So let's just have a look where that's set up. And you'll see that we have the syntax here. So I'm going to take that again and I'm going to copy that here. Now this is using a system color. So what I'm going to do, I don't want a system color I just want a color, but say I don't remember the syntax. So what I'm going to do just temporarily is go to options and turn on auto complete. This will help us with the syntax. If I press period, you'll see now we get the option of color. And if I press period again, you'll see it's showing me all the potential colors. So let's find the color we want choose any of these and I'm just going to go for green. I think that's everything there so I'm going to say end. If 
fact, what I'm going to do is just change, turn off the autocomplete because that makes things really slow. Like so. Then else. And we're going to have very similar syntax. So I'm going to say begin end. Just going to copy that and paste. This time we can have a semicolon after that end. And here we want to say start strategy trades. And we want trade to be set to false. And we want the back color instead of being green, we want it to be red. And what also we, we want to do down here is we don't just want to, in the little uh, dummy strategy that we've got, we don't just want the the counter, we also want to know the status of that trade variable. So let's just go down there and we can add that to our print statement. Okay, so let's just go back to the program and you'll notice that we're getting trades even though we haven't told it to start strategy trades. And the reason for that, or we've not told the uh, buy next market and sell short, we've not told them in any way that we need anything but to have a real-time market. So what we need to do here is say if trade is equal to true and that then we will get trades. In other words that variable trade has to be equal to be uh, equal to, to true for us to be able to get some trade. So let's just go back verify that and look at the chart again and you'll see now that we don't seem to be getting any trades. Let's just try this. I'm going to click start strategy trades. Well, we certainly seem to have the background uh, of that set to green. Oh, and one more thing I think I did for the original is just in the strategies format and set intrabar order generation and calculation. So let's just move these form where we can see it and start strategy trades. Okay, that's started. Let's just let it run for a few seconds, then we can try pausing it. Okay, so we've got a few trades there. I'm just going to click pause now, see if we get a gap of trades. Just let that run for several bars. So if, if this sort of uh, tutorial is useful to you and you're interested in TradeStation Easy Language, then please subscribe to this YouTube channel. You'll see in a few moments the logo will appear. You can click on that logo and that will subscribe you to the channel if you're on watching this on YouTube. Also go to markplex.com, that's M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X.com and subscribe to the email list and you'll see a lot of uh, hopefully useful materials and programs all to do with TradeStation Easy Language. So you can see we've got a gap in trades. I'm going to say start strategy trades and you'll see that the strategy trades recommence and this is all without changing the status of the of the strategy now uh, one final thing is that in this program i've pretty much left the code as it was in the designer generated code so for example we uh, we've not set up any name spaces in the final program what i've done is I've used uh, some namespaces here like using EL system, using EL Windows form. So that means that instead of having this uh, great big long EL system dot drawing, for instance, we could just say client box equals new size, etc. As you'll see here in the final program. So that, uh, that I will make the program available for download if you want to save yourself some typing and hopefully this will be useful. Thank you very much.